Okay, everybody, this video is going to be a quick uh, quick tutorial on how to get uh, Windows 10 uh, Core, I IoT Core, installed on a Raspberry Pi 3 and then remotely connect to it. So the first thing you need to do is uh, go out here to this, uh, this link that I have on the screen. You can get to this by typing in uh, windowsondevices.com and it will redirect to this, uh, this URL. Uh, so once you get that, it will come up and it looks like this. And you want to click this Get Started button right here. And you come down, you select uh, the Raspberry Pi 3. We're going to install on a uh, SD card. So go ahead and select that. And we want the Windows 10 IoT Core. Uh, you can do the uh, Insider Preview, but that one may have some bugs in it. So th if this is your first time, I'd suggest the uh, a confirmed a good version. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and click uh, next here. It's going to take us to this screen here. And what we need to do is uh, download this dashboard. Uh, this dashboard allows us to uh, install the uh, software on the card. So uh, that's a, a critical piece here. So go ahead and download that if you haven't. And when you have that finished, go ahead and click next. All right, and then this screen just basically overviews what we're doing right here. Uh, it tells you to open the dashboard uh, and then select a new device and, and go on from there to get it installed on the SD card. Pretty standard stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that dashboard right now and bring it into the screen here so you guys can see it. And what we're going to do is set up a new device. So we'll go ahead and click that. We select our, uh, our device type, which is the Raspberry Pi 3 for this one. I'm going to go ahead and give it a name of, uh, how about just demo? Call it demo this time. And I'm going to put my super secret password in here, which is Raspberry, just like it is on the Raspberry Pi by default. So hopefully I've typed it all correctly. I'm going to go ahead and accept the license terms, and I want to point out, make sure that you select your Wi-Fi connection if you have one. If not, you can connect to the Raspberry Pi using an Ethernet cable, but, uh, you know, obviously, if you have the Wi-Fi, this is probably the most convenient way to do it. Uh, I've already had connected to previously. Otherwise, it would ask for your password if you have one on your Wi-Fi network. It says it's going to erase the SD card. That's perfectly fine. I expected that. And off it goes. So this is going to take a few seconds. And what it does is it pops up this window uh, for this uh, Windows IoT Core. Don't really know why it pops this up other than just to show it to you, because I don't believe you have to click on anything or do anything with it. I uh, think it's doing its thing in the background. So uh, we can see here that uh, the Windows Core is installing on the Flash SD card. Right now, it kind of looks like it's hung up here, but really what it's doing is it's waiting for the security to uh, expire on the Windows 10 machine and say you need an administrator password or administrator authorization so that you can um, overwrite this SD card. All right, so that just popped up on my screen, and I've confirmed it, and now it's going to apply the image to the SD card. So while that's going on, I'll go ahead and pause the video here and we'll pick it up whenever we get to the end of this. So the transfer is completed, and the last thing it does is it pops up this little window here uh, showing me my SD card and that the files have been written to the card. So that's all well and good. Go ahead and close this down. We don't need that window anymore. I do recommend you leave your dashboard open, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull my SD card from my desktop PC. And what I'm going to do is take it over and put it in the... Raspberry Pi. And I'll try to get this aligned here so you can see as much of this on the screen as possible. All right, so here it goes in the Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to apply power. Make sure I get that connector correct. There we go. And we can see that the Raspberry Pi is starting to boot up. You can see the monitor there in the background. Now, you don't have to have a monitor um, on attached to your Raspberry Pi. I find it's a little bit easier when I'm configuring these things for the first time, so I like to have one. Uh, it's just a little small 10-inch monitor that I picked up off of Amazon, and it does the job okay. 
Uh, but uh, what I would suggest is that, um, you know, the first time through, it's probably a good idea uh, to get an HDMI cable and plug into a monitor somewhere just so you can see a boot up and have some confidence in it. Uh, after you've done it a couple of times, you don't actually have to do that. You do, however, have to be patient. It does take, uh, you know, several minutes in some cases, depending on the speed of your SD card, for the uh, the boot up to actually complete successfully. So uh, you'll see here whenever uh, it finally does get up here that uh, it has um, some configuration screens and some things that come on as you go. So I'm gonna go ahead, and while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up our dashboard again. And let's see, get a hold of that. Kind of move him off this side here so we can see we got both things going on. All right. I'm going to click my devices uh, right here. And what will happen is eventually, once this is all booted up and connected to the network, there will be a connection here with uh, the demo. Um, well, let's just say here. Somehow, we ran into an error on the boot up here. That's interesting. Well, what can you say? You about, about the time you demo something, something goes wrong. All right, let's pause this. Okay, so what I did was I formatted the SD card and brought the image back down and put it back in the Raspberry Pi and we seem to be going uh, along a little better. Uh, as I said, it comes up to this configuration screen um, and I, you don't actually have to do anything with this. If you just let this sit here for a few minutes, it will uh, on its own progress past this. So I'm gonna come back over to our um, our uh, desktop uh, in our dashboard here and click on my devices. And we notice that it came up with a my device, but it's got the wrong name. As you will recall, I uh, had named it demo. And then in the background, we can see that the, the pious evidently timed out and, and it's gone through its process and, and by default it's going to select uh, the uh, English as the language and it's going to reboot itself and apply some of those configuration settings by default. So like I said, you don't actually have to have a monitor uh, to do this process because you know in a perfect scenario where the Raspberry Pi boots up successfully, if you just wait long enough, it will eventually get there uh, with the default settings. So I'm uh, gonna go ahead and leave this on the screen here. We should see a couple of things happen. We should see the device booting in the background. And then when it's successful, uh, we should see this, uh, this uh, name change on the uh, My Devices screen. Okay, for some reason it didn't boot through the first time, uh, but when we do see it, it um, I had to unplug it and plug it back in. We see it still has the configuration screen here in the background, but this time it did at least select the correct name for the device. So we're making a little bit of progress. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull this screen over and double click this. Demo administration, okay. And what I want to do is click this um, this open device in the, the portal. I'll put my administrator account there and then password. This is the password I set. And there we go. So it takes us into the web browser and uh, to the device here. And what we want to get here is we want to come down here and get this remote um, item off the menu. And what we want to do is enable this Windows IoT remote server, okay? And it tells us it's successfully enabled. Let's go ahead and click OK. I'm gonna go ahead and move this back out of the way. And now we can see in the background once that was done, that the, the screen is updated and we've gotten past all of our configuration settings and, and it's uh, sitting here waiting for us to access it. 
Now, the other thing we need to do to access it remotely is we need to go out to the, the Windows Store, and what we want to do is shop for the uh, Windows IoT Remote Client. There we go. And you shop for this and do an install on it. And you can, you can see here I've already got it uh, installed, so I could just launch it. And when I do that, it comes up with this very simple screen. And what we can do is uh, click the box here, or you can type in the IP address if you prefer. Go ahead and select it and click Connect. And we can see that we have remotely connected to the to the device. I have my screen in the background up here, uh, but I have uh, this window that gives me full control of the device. You can see the other mouse moving there in the background. Uh, I can get a command prompt, or and I do suggest when you're first doing this um, this uh, setup on the device that you come in here and you click on these tutorials uh, because you want to make sure the device is fully functioning. And you know what? This very simple uh, tutorial right here of uh, turning the light on you know, with the blinky, uh, you know what? That tells you that your GPI opens are all working, all connected. And first time through, you probably want to know that stuff. So, uh, you know, just know that those tutorials are there. There's not a whole lot of them, but they are there. I think that's going to do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, uh, please like it, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.